Hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk to you about today our solution and how it fits to solve business challenges in today's environments. So as we know, the challenges on the business and management side is usually solve problems really quickly across different groups. Even though if there's a different monitoring solutions, uh, the management, the IT management needs to solve those problems quickly to support the SLAs. Um, a lot of times the groups are lacking detailed reporting across all layers and systems, and they might also be lacking any alerting or detailed customized alerting for their environment. At the same time, the IT teams struggle because they are in different groups, different silos, working with their own tools, looking at data that might not be compatible, might be uh, set or visualized in a different way where it does not correlate in an efficient way to look at results or a common line of results. Therefore, it can produce a lot of misunderstandings and finger pointing to try to solve these issues in a quickly manner to meet those SLAs. So our solution for BVQ, today we're going to talk about the Brocade SAN and integration with the IBM Storage Spectrum Virtualize, that's StoreWise and SVC. So we provide a complete integration between those layers with full granularity and visibility, which provides the correlation of the information needed across those two layers to get to results. And we offer ready-to-go dashboards to make it all easy for day-to-day -day activities. So our solution provides that bridging between those silos where the teams work that provides high quality of the performance to do root cause analysis, uh, cost, consistent monitoring and alerting. So our solution provides an integrated platform to provide the real time insight that is needed for these challenges. Our solution consists of the spectrum virtualized monitoring and root cause analysis. It, so we take the data from the SVC or StoreWise. Now we also support the Brocade SAN switches and director's fabrics, as well as the VMware platform. So we, all, we provide an end-to-end -end visibility to do analysis, root cause analysis, monitoring, and customize and detail alerting, as well as reporting. And we can wrap all of this around our services as well. How our customers use BVQ. So I'm going to provide you information and an overall about how our solution meets those challenges. First on how, to pro how it provides the overall performance overview that is needed between both layers to find bottlenecks and also slow drainers in a quick way. And also how our dashboards help you with working with day-to-day -day activities for best practices or meeting best practices. So again, I want to iterate that our BVQ Brocade SAN solution is offered as a standalone. So it can be uh, installed and used in environments where they might the environment might not have any IBM storage, but it can be used for to monitor their Brocade environment, as well as a solution integrated with the storage. So this dashboard, this is one of our ready-to-go dashboards. So we work with these dashboards that have been customized already to, for specific goals. So this, this one shows the overall performance. That's the goal of this dashboard, the overall performance of the SAN environment. So we use tree maps. So let me explain a little bit about the tree maps on the top left. So we show the how all of the environment is connected together in the hierarchy visualized in a tree map. So what we're looking is at the SAN environment with two fabrics, fabric A, fabric B. Within those are the SAN switches, and within those are the ports. So the small squares are the ports within the, the switches. This gives us a good visualization of an environment that might be medium to large and uh, a little bit complicated to visualize with just tables and um, uh, diagrams. Now we can select any of these objects. So we can select a single fabric or both at the same time or a single switch or even a single port in the performance graphs that are on the right are loaded with the data. So what data are we providing here? That is the, the data rate represented by the blue line. 
and the orange represents the frame size. So this will give you an overall view, a historical view, or real time, or any any length of time that you you're ready to see um, the data rate. So you look for high peaks of how the the ports are being utilized. Okay. So in this case, I am I've selected a single fabric, so that's what I'm looking at. Uh, high peaks and data rate usage. And I also look for frame size. So at the bottom, we see the individual lines. So the blue line are the individual lines for the data rates of a single single ports within that fabric. And then the left hand side, we have more metrics that help us look at the overall picture, which is the buffer credit weight, which is very important in dealing with SAN issues. Um, and overall issues. So that's the buffer credit weight percentage represented by the yellow line. So we can hover over the peak, for example, and it immediately gives us the name of the port that is experiencing a high buffer credit weight at this specific time. And we can correlate that with, and I'm gonna show you, I'm zooming into this view, that we can correlate that with the same high peak on the data rate that we saw that occurs at the same time. So we can conclude that there is a an efficient use of the buffer credit weights, which is waiting over a threshold above a 10%. Um, in this case, it's a little bit low, even though there's a peak, but a threshold is wait, a wait time of 10% would be an issue. Our next dashboard that's ready to go as well helps us find slow drainers in the environment. So specifically to determine if the bottleneck in the environment is it related to a host issue or a SAN issue so we're looking again at a tree map on the left so let's say the IT specialist administrator receives an alert of a host a production host having a high response time so you, the users are complaining so they can go and open up this dashboard look at all the hosts so all of these squares represents a host and we can select a particular host that we've been alerted on and it'll show on the right hand side the data as far as in this case transfer latency. So when we look at host and storage connectivity issues, we look at the transfer latency. If it goes above 0.5 milliseconds, then there's uh, uh, something to worry about. There's a slow connection between the I/O going from the host to the storage and back. And at the bottom is the performance of the buffer credit weight percentage on the those node ports that are being serviced, that are servicing this I/O. So if we if we see a a high above 10%, then we can conclude there's an issue with the SAN. And if it's a low buffer credit weight percentage, then we can then we conclude it's an issue with the host, which can be either an HBA uh, has failed, so there's only one working at the time, therefore there's a slow response time that the users are experiencing. Our next dashboard shows the integration with the IBM storage volumes. So now we're talking about the Storewise or SVC volumes that use specific ports on the SAN. So this tree map <clears throat> is showing the fabric. So there's about five fabrics. <clears throat> within those are switches, and within the switches are the ports belonging to each switch. And at the bottom, you see a table. This table helps you filter and look at for example, the number of volumes or VDISCs, if you look at the right, the column on the right hand side, those are the, the volumes or VDISCs on the storage side that are using specific ports. So BVQ VMware is using port 17. This helps in situations where uh, either the environment is being migrated over or expanded where more switches are being added to the fabrics and you wanna learn how how many volumes are assigned to specific ports so that you can determine if some of them are overutilized or do you have too many VDIS or volumes using a specific port and therefore the administrator can do some balancing. To go further, we have this dashboard. So this dashboard I've created is the same tree map that I showed you earlier, but now I've added performance graphs where now we can really look at the performance of the volumes. So I've selected um, this tree map that I've actually added the volume, the VDISC, to the tree map. So I've selected a specific switch and I've plotted the VDISC performance of the volumes that are using those that switch and the specific port. So we can look at data rates represented by the blue lines. So if we look for peaks that go up 
sporadically, and we also look at latency represented by the red line. So we can see that there's latencies of 60 milliseconds in this case, spikes that occur three times during this period. And then we look at the SAN switch ports at the bottom and how they're being utilized by those requests coming from the from the V disk. I'm sorry, from the hosts that are using those V disks. So we look at this load on the bottom, the data rates, and we also look for peaks that we can match with the performance at the top. We can correlate the times. And this helps to determine in, if a balancing is needed within the ports or switches according to the load that is being used. We also have this dashboard that helps administrators with their day-to-day -day activities because as workloads change and characteristics of those workloads change over time, um, usually it's it's good practice to look at the performance of ISL. So connectivity, this shows the connectivity of the switches and their ISL links either at remote sites or within a specific room or, or a single building. It doesn't matter. So we're, we're showing the on the, the tree map, the fabric, the two sites, site Dresden and MH Dresden. Within those are the specific rooms, lab DR, lab um, room MH. Within those are switch, one single switch, and the two ISLs belonging to that switch are seen in this tree map. So now we only focus on the ISL connectivity between remote sites and between that are connected between switches. Um, this helps to make sure that the fabric is running up as efficiently as possible, right? And it's very important, especially for ISL links, to have the correct, uh, the appropriate number of buffer credits to um, to service the the I/O and the connectivity, especially in long distance connections. We show here in the performance three main metrics. The one again, the data rate. The second one is the frame size, represented by the orange line, and the buffer credit weight, represented by the yellow line. So we can look for, again, for peaks in the buffer credit, mo most importantly, to if it goes above a 10% wait time. And the frame size metric is very important when used for sizing correctly the buffer, the number of buffer credits for a, a connectivity link. So the, the buffer credit, the frame size is used link speed plus the distance to size correctly the number of buffer credits. So you have this information in a single view for ISL connectivity. Now, I want to point out now that um, I was missing one important part, that when you click on the tree map for, and you click one ISL, it immediately highlights its target ISL. So if you look at the source, it immediately highlights the target, and that's represented by the orange color that I've selected. And that's what I'm plotting in the performance view. All right. We also have dashboards that help with best practices in an in, in SVC or store-wise environment connected to the brocade SAN. So what we're seeing here are is a four tree maps or four areas um, where two tree maps are shown and two are not. If you look at the the title of each area, so we're looking at the SVC host connected to one fabric. So the purpose of this dashboard is to check for redundancy to make sure that no mistakes have been made. Or if they have, we, these are pointed out um, as far as redundant connectivity of all of the devices within the environment. So the top left shows the SVC host connected to only one fabric. So here we see that there's no redundancy. So it's being pointed out that the, this environment, this cluster SVC1, is not having a, is only connected to one fabric and not to the second fabric that is available. The one on the right, SVC nodes connected to one fabric, it's empty because the nodes within the SVC have been connected to, to the a dual fabric. So there is redundancy and it's, it's okay as far as best practices for high availability. The bottom left is also empty because the backend controllers that go to the SVC or the store-wise are connected to two fabrics. And the one on the bottom right is showing the SAN. So the SAN switches that are part of this environment have not been connected to two fabrics. They're only connected to one fabrics. And these are the ones that are the switches that are only connected to a single fabric named DR. 
So this is used for best practices to for a quick check of let's make sure I have a whole redundant environment for high availability purposes. And this dashboard gives us uh, quick information as far as cleaning up the, the zones in a SAN. So this <clears throat> shows the whole fabric in a table format. We're not seeing a, a tree map here, but just a table format will shows fabric A, fabric, fabric A, and fabric B. I've um, uh, opened up the fabric A, so that I'm listing all of the switches with the zones, the zone names, type, and then the number of members. There's a column number of members, and there's a col column called unlinked, and there's a number associated for each row, indicating that there are some members that are that don't have a connection anymore in the zone. Therefore, um, it's interesting to look at these to maybe just disable those so they don't belong to this zone anymore because they're unlinked or offline, not active. And at the bottom, it shows all of the, the zones that are, have all their members um, not active anymore, and therefore they're candidates for deletion. These zones will be candidates for deletion. So there's about eight under the column Zan zone. Uh, FAS4, FAS4, for example, FAS5, that could be deleted. So in addition to our uh, dashboards that we saw, we have also a solution for monitoring. A web interface is to have them in a main room where everybody in the team can have access and can see them and look at uh, specific information about the SAN environment. So this is just uh, Specific to the SAN, it shows a SANS fabric, uh, overall ports, disconnect number, disconnected ports, number of switches, and the overall data rate on a specific fabric. And we look again for peaks. So this serves to just get a quick glance of what's going on with the SAN. These are can be shared by a link between team members, or like I said, put up in a in a wall board in a main room where everybody can see them. So to wrap up and summarize, we have the ready-to-go dashboards that can help in day-to-day -day activities when monitoring and doing root cause analysis in SAN and Brocade um, because they're, they offer the integration needed to officially find the, trouble sh the answers to issues and bottlenecks in the environment. And they're flexible, dynamic. Um, and the reason why we can do this integration and offer this visibility into both environments at the same time where many objects are, uh, are part of it is because our BBQ solution runs very, very fast with uh, one minute or less resolution when we plot these performance graphs. This all avoids to get lost in the masses of data with our tree maps in the visualization that we offer. And again, we offer reporting and also alerting in any of the environments in Brocade, VMware, and SVC StoreWise. Thank you for checking our channel. According to statistics obtained from different events around the world, such as the IBM TechU, eight of every 10 systems administrators are looking for ways to implement automation and analytics in their daily work to increase their productivity. We have this and many other solutions to help you embrace the power of automation, making your IT infrastructure more efficient in different areas, such as storage, disaster recovery, virtualization, mainframe, and many more. Go to svasoftware.com to find out more or contact us directly. Thank you.